Welcome to Raising OKC Kids, Conversations with Metro Family in Oklahoma City. I'm Erin Page, and today we are talking about charter schools. Welcome to Heather Zacarias, Head of School for Western Gateway, and Dean Ketchum, Head of School for John Rex. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. So first, let's talk about what a charter school is. What makes a charter school unique and different from other educational options? Heather, will you start? Absolutely. First and foremost, charter schools are public schools. That, that is a misconception across our community that charter school leaders work on clearing up. Um, but also they're independently operated public schools. So that means that we have the freedom to design classrooms that meet our students' needs, our community's needs. All charters operate under a contract with a charter school authorizer. And so for the state of Oklahoma, that could be a government agency, a university, a public school, and they hold us accountable to the high standards within that contract that's outlined in our charter. Excellent. Dean, what would you add to that? I would agree with Heather completely, knowing her well, and just say that um, <laughs> charters provide a unique opportunity after being all over the country and parent choice schools and public schools. We certainly are a public school, but it is a choice of whether or not you want to attend the school. So I think it gives us not pressure, but a reason to innovate and create something that would draw um, parents in that want to attend your school. And many of them go out of their way to jump through all the hoops to manage to get here. So uh, I think that's a wonderful aspect to have that engagement from your community and a buy-in from the very beginning. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for clearing up some of those misconceptions. That gives us such a great foundation for this conversation. So let's talk now about some of the primary reasons you hear that parents do choose charter schools for their kids. Maybe some especially timely reasons that parents are considering charter schools right now. And then what are the key things that parents should really look for or ask questions about if they are considering a charter school? Dean, will you start this one? I think certainly parents um, have become very savvy um, and we try to put out publications so that they know exactly um, what kind of curriculum, what kind of events, what kind of things are happening. Certainly it's been different through two years of a pandemic for what we've been able to offer. Um, but uh, I think that my parents um, are appreciative of having a very clear school board policy a policy for children, rules and regulations, and knowing that we're going to be able to adhere to those and provide a safe community for their child. Also that um, we can change quickly. Our boards are very um, active and responsive. Uh, we can implement curriculum, we can alter our days. We don't have to go through a big hierarchy. We're a small institution and you get answers from your administrators immediately. And the feedback and communication is very high. So I would say parents do have to do some reading, decide if it's a school for them and knowing what our limitations are. And sometimes there are limitations with a charter and what um, we bring to the table as an offering to draw them in. Heather, what would you add to that? You know, I agree with Dean that um, board policy and adhering to those, especially within a locally operated board that makes decisions based on the immediate needs of our community. I think parents choose charter schools based on their family values, based on what educational experience they are seeking for their child. And that's what's unique about each charter is that we all offer different experiences. So it gives parents choice, right? And that's what we want parents to have. That's, that's what we advocate on behalf of is parent choice and allowing parents to uh, tour the school, ask those hard questions, meet some of our teachers, look at the surrounding community and make a decision that feels safe to them, but also that that meets those values that they value. You know, we say at Western Gateway that our school is a family of families and that we're wanting to extend what they value and what they deem important into instructional time. And I think that's what makes all of the charters in the metro and, and Oklahoma unique is that we all work on that. We all have that goal to make sure that our families' values and, and what they see important in their own homes is reflected in the instruction at school. 
I like that you guys mentioned how savvy parents are today. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's certainly true and it can be overwhelming. Um, I attended public school, so did my husband. Um, and it's kind of overwhelming that there are a lot more choices mm -hmm. now than there were, you know, our choices were you go to the public school that you feed into or you go to private school and, and there weren't a lot more options out there. So I think sometimes for parents today, that can feel very overwhelming. Um, I know my family has looked into some alternative education options for our oldest child. And I have been so pleasantly surprised at um, all the choices available to us mm -hmm. and the willingness of folks to answer our questions, like you said, to provide tours. Um, so just uh, from the parent perspective, I uh, would encourage our parents listening, you know, if you're considering this, there's so much, there's so much out there, but there are so many parties who are willing to help you through what can feel like kind of an overwhelming journey to find the best fit for your family. Absolutely. I'd love, I'd love to hear more about each of your schools specifically. They're both so unique. You guys are doing great things in our communities. So tell us what makes your schools unique, both in terms of the programming you offer and your student population. Heather, will you start us off? Sure. Western Gateway has been open for its first inaugural year this school year, and we have pre-K, kindergarten, and first grade to start off with. Each year thereafter, we'll be adding on a grade level. And what's unique about Western Gateway is it is a dual language program. And what that means is we offer a 50-50 two-way dual immersion. And I'll break that down for you very simply. Our students are learning in both English and Spanish. And the students have two teachers, one that provides English language arts and math entirely in English. And then for the other part of the day, they have Spanish language arts social studies and science entirely in Spanish. So we are a very heavy language campus and we focus primarily on building bilingualism and biliteracy so that our students, when they leave Western Gateway and they start making those choices for electives and AP coursework that they are already prepared to take that second language and be successful. And ultimately the goal is that um, that bilingual seal of literacy on their diplomas that will make them more marketable in the community. So it's kind of how we set up our day at Western Gateway is all of our students are receiving that richness in language arts, but in Spanish and English. And Heather, you mentioned pre-K, kindergarten and first grade. Do you all have plans to add additional grades? Yes, each year thereafter, we'll add on another grade. So next year we add on second, then third, then fourth. Right now we are contracted through fourth grade. Our campus is ready for three of each classroom all the way through fourth grade. There is discussion about a middle school. We're not quite there yet in regards to funding, but our board and our staff have a vision for a middle school. So we hope that we can extend that learning in the bilingual and biliteracy uh, pathway into our, a middle school setting. It's so great. It's been really fun to watch Western Gateway over the last year, <laughs> watch you guys get prepared and then finally get to open your campus to students. Right. Dean, tell us more about John Rex and the great things that you guys are doing for students and in the community. It is kind of amazing. Give you a little perspective. I'm a native Oklahoman who started my career here and then moved to New York City for a while. So I know an urban landscape and I was drawn to John Wax because I feel like this urban corridor in Oklahoma City that is constantly developing is not only exciting for the adults who are moving downtown or experiencing downtown life, but for the kids that get to enjoy it and see a different perspective of Oklahoma. Um, some of the things that I find most rewarding at John Rex is the way our building is constructed with pods of classrooms where kids can intermingle and teachers are collaborating. Relationships and engagement are so important in education. And I feel like by having that close proximity, putting kids in different groups and sharing classrooms, uh, we alleviate not only some problems, but attend to learning in a very specific way. Some of the opportunities you get downtown, I'll just bring up the corpse flower at Mary Garden. We didn't know exactly when it was gonna bloom. But because we have the flexibility with our parents and with um, making decisions a little bit on the fly sometimes, 
everyone was able to walk over. You may have seen some of it online. And I think it's one of those experiences kids will remember for their life. They may, may never see it again. And that teachers are so willing to jump into those experiences to help enhance learning. And I think that's what we do well at John Rex is we take advantage of opportunities to enhance learning. We build on relationships and engagement and we try to involve our entire community. And hopefully that will get better as we move forward out of this um, two years that we've all been through. <laughs> you guys have such a unique relationship with the Myriad Gardens. Um, and I know other community organizations too, but I'm always so impressed with the ways that you and the Myriad Gardens work together to provide kids those out of the typical classroom experiences. Well, we're a K-8 school, and before the middle school was ready and functional, Myriad Gardens took us in, and so we were holding middle school classes at the Myriad Gardens, so we feel like they've been more than a partner, but really um, just a special place for us to be able to attend all the events. They welcome us in, they reach out, and it's like that with all of our museums, our wonderful um, arts community downtown, Civic Center Music Hall. There's a plethora of things that we engage in. One of them is the Oklahoma City um, Library System, which we walk over to weekly and kids check out their books. And it's been really nice to see how these relationships continue to develop. That's so cool. Um, in addition to um, those community partnerships that you guys are both able to build, what are some of the unique options and opportunities your teachers can provide students in the classroom that might be different than other educational options? Dean, you mentioned that ability to, when the corpse flower blooms, head on to the, over to the Myriad Gardens to check that out. What other kinds of neat opportunities do your teachers, uh, are your teachers able to provide in the classroom? Well, I think Heather alluded to this with um, very quick responses and um, answers to questions. So something pops up on a teacher's radar. Doors are open. My leadership team's doors are open. They can walk into the head of school's office and, hey, this is only going to happen today. We just found out. Do you think we can engage? And usually the answer is yes, if we can put it all together. Um, so I think that that's a unique um, opportunity within a small population, a very close-knit community. Um, my teachers are always willing um, to learn and move forward. We were um, lucky to receive two OETT technology grants through Oklahoma. And so this entire year, we've been exploring things that we want to possibly apply for early childhood or for upper grades that are more cutting edge that will allow you to use um, all of your devices in the most appropriate way at school at a higher level. And that's just one example of how we try to keep them engaged. We want retention rates to stay high uh, and we want teachers to feel like they're being as fulfilled as the students in their classroom. Heather, in addition to obviously the bilingual immersion happening at Western Gateway, what are some other unique opportunities that your teachers are able to provide your students? We're always looking for opportunities to share cultural diversity and incorporate that into instruction. So one of the ways that we do that, our mascot is El Oso, which means the bear. And the idea here at Western Gateway is that El Oso travels around the world and he visits different continents, countries, families and friends. He gathers information and uh, memorabilia from that country and that culture and he brings it back to Western Gateway. So we have a monthly assembly where El Oso returns to school. He returns in this big box and he's this big bear sitting inside. And when we open the box and reveal where he's been, he's wearing uh, something from that country. He's got food and something representing the arts and the economy of that community, of that culture. And we reveal him to the whole student body and they get excited and uh, they then know that that next month is what they're going to be studying. So just recently he returned, he returned from Peru and uh, we have a staff member here from Peru. So she's doing some guest speaking, but we incorporate his travels into instruction and just make it fun for that early childhood imagination. And they know that that's going to be incorporated. So we're not just you know, the bare basics of the, you know, reading, math, writing, and social science through state standards, which we incorporate those things, but we use that project-based approach and that multiculturalism and awareness that 
there's more than outside of the metro that you have access to. And so we incorporate him to show that you can travel, you can learn about other communities. And, and not only that, but you can share that knowledge. So right now we're just in the middle of a whole project-based unit on Peru and the whole school is studying that. And right now his box and all his things are traveling from room to room so that they can have access to what we call realia, which is real life objects that represent something and, and engages all the senses. So that might be something that's unique here at Western Gateway that not a lot of other schools might be doing, but that is something that the teachers definitely work on planning and pulling into instruction. That is amazing. I would like to sign up to yes. be a student. <laughs> You want to learn about Peru? <laughs> I can't so tell you cool. where he's going next. It's a secret. <laughs> that is so exciting. I can I can just imagine your students' little faces when they see where he's been. Oh my and gosh, the they lost their minds. <laughs> they were like, ah. <laughs> that's so great. Um, when you get through studying the bear, you can come over and see our um, butterfly garden where the kids go wild over the monarchs that come every year. And oh, I think uh, Heather just... Uh, kind of said this too, whether you're in a math lesson or another lesson, once that happens, it's just kind of give us 10 minutes and everyone's out to the garden to go see and take care of. And that was through another grant, but those, those really enriching innovative opportunities and having the time and not having teachers feel like I'll be in trouble if I pop out to do this. Mm -hmm. I think is uh, like fresh air in a classroom, just knowing I can makes a huge difference. And knowing that the parent community, they wanted to be here. They're so supportive of those things. They love those ideas when their children come home and are so excited over, guess what we did today? Mm -hmm. Dean, I love what you said about teachers feeling um, the ability to build whatever they need to into their lessons, to have the opportunity to go out and, and see the monarchs um, in the garden when that presents itself. And um, we know that teachers, across the nation, but particularly here in Oklahoma, um, are overwhelmed and, and burned out right now. We have done a lot of reporting on how our teachers are feeling, how the community can support them. So in addition to providing wonderful opportunities for students, charter schools can also provide really unique opportunities like you've discussed for staff. Tell us some more about what makes your schools great places to work. Heather, will you start? That's a great question. And I, I'm so glad you asked that because like I said earlier, we're in our first year. This is our inaugural year. We call this staff our founding faculty. And what, what we offer here in regards to teaching is a support system. Typically in an interview, when it's time for that candidate to ask questions, I always hope they'll ask, well, what support do you have for me as a teacher in your, in your building or in your organization? especially those first year teachers that need wraparound support. We provide an instructional facilitator that is um, very knowledgeable in dual language, has taught in a dual language setting. So she has been able to support teachers in developing their um, instructional planning framework for incorporating dual language, because that is something that that's not a skill that everyone has to offer. And when someone does have that bilingual skill to offer, we want to be sure that we wrap that support around them. We also um, love that we're small. <laughs> we're not one of these single schools in a district of 100 schools. We feel very intimate in our setting of being able to provide support to teachers and them supporting one another. I tell every new um, candidate here that our teachers have a genuine hope and desire to see other people succeed. So it's a non-competitive uh, school atmosphere where teachers are supporting one another. We also re just recently <clears throat> have secured a partnership with UCO, the University of Central Oklahoma, over the course of the next four years through a grant that will invite UCO uh, bilingual uh, professors to come in and uh, provide coaching to our school staff, to, to provide uh, professional development to our staff, as well as resources. So we feel like we have uh, equipped our teachers with all that they need to be successful at Western Gateway. And, and once again, we just love that we're small to start off with, and we can really give the teachers the attention that they desire and that they need. Dean, tell us more about what 
Oh, go ahead, Heather. Oh, I was just gonna add, and we're fun. <laughs> you know, you, you want to work at West, you want to work at a place that's fun, and you want to work at a place that people support one another. And and I I know that to be true about John Rex as well. They they have just an amazing um, staff of of educators that um, that I know Dean just loves working with too. <laughs> Dean, tell us more about what makes John Rex such a great place to work. I think uh, Heather alluded to it, that it feels like a, a family where it's not even all your professional needs, but many of us have um, personal and family challenges. And sometimes you need someone and the closest people to you are, that you are to usually are your coworkers, especially in a school setting. And so we try to honor that. We certainly have a very supportive PTA community and board and beyond Teacher Appreciation Week, we try to support them and treat them and surprise them throughout the year. Um, I think the only times I start worrying about a teacher is when they're not taking advantage of going outside or asking, may I do this? Um, we really want to be the, um, the wind under their wings in my job. I want to look for resources, uh, whether it's monetary resources or a partner, someone who can help facilitate what their dreams are for their kids, especially um, during this time when we've been pretty closed in or just starting to get out and do things again, it's really important to see those smiles to bring people in that are lifting them up and for us to do our part to make this a very fun and engaged and rewarding place to keep returning to. So we think about retention, teacher effectiveness and teacher happiness all the time at John Rex. Mm -hmm. I love that. It sounds like you're both very intentional about your educators' mental health and supporting them, especially in a time that has been so difficult and chaotic for so many. I love that you talked about parent support, too. I think that's so important. Um, so for our parents listening who um, their interest is peaked in charter schools now, what do they need to know about the typical application and enrollment process for a charter school? Dean, will you tell us about John Rex? Yes, and I have to ask questions all the time. I'm just finishing my second year and um, this is my first time in a charter. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. But uh, you know, I tell parents that are calling in, if you have internet access, read the admissions policy online, read it again, call back, ask questions. There's someone here really, really knowledgeable. We're unique that we do have a catchment zone and we're tiered in our processes. So children living downtown uh, many times, uh, not by their own choice, have a place to go. They can go to their home school, but certainly they have a spot here at any time. And then we also have a lottery that we go through for all the rest of our students who qualify to be in that lottery. I have to say, with a big smile on my face, um, we generally have a very extensive wait list, which makes me very happy and sad a little at the same time. Um, it is what it is, but uh, we like our class sizes. We like all of the parents who came in. Like I said, I think I learned this by working at a parent choice school in New York. Once you choose to go somewhere and you know the expectations, you know the policies, and you know that the school's going to follow through, you've won half the battle already for that engagement and that that sense of uh, history. We want this to be a place that when you talk to children after high school and college, that they'll say, oh, I went to John Rex in Oklahoma City. Like we want that history. We want it to be the kind of place that children want to come back and see over and over again as they move on. That's great. Heather, what do parents need to know about the application and enrollment process at Western Gateway? It's similar to John Rex. We enroll through an online application process using one app and it's a lottery and we group our students geographically by tiers. Tier one is our attendance zone. So if you live in the five neighborhoods that surround Western Gateway, Jones Grove, College Hill, Higgins Heights, the Wheeler District or Will Rogers Courts, then you are given first priority to enroll um, before anyone else. And we fill all the seats that we can with students that live in our attendance zone. Secondly, if there are seats available, then we open up to tier two, which is any student that resides in OKCPS school district. <clears throat> we fill all of the seats with those students second. And then third, if there are seats still available, then we enroll students that live outside of OKCPS. We also give siblings of current students priority so that we can try to keep families together. I, as a parent, know how hard it is to 
transport kids to multiple schools. So we try um, to keep sibling families together. And then as well, if you teach um, or work full time at Western Gateway, we do offer a seat to those children as well if they're age eligible for our school. And the, the process is a little bit different for charters. You really have to get a jump on keeping up with the dates of when application windows open. Our application window was open for the first few weeks of February, and then we ran our lottery in uh, February 25th. And right now we're in the middle of enrolling all of our new families for next school year. So for parents who might be listening or watching today, I would pay very close attention if you're thinking about a charter school to looking at the timeline on the websites of when to apply, when the enrollment process were, or starts and finishes so that you can kind of get in that window of opportunity in making that choice for your children. I learned very quickly as a parent that those application windows are usually much earlier than you know an enrollment or re-enrollment in your home public school. So definitely good to check those dates and make notes of those on your calendar for parents that are looking into charter schools. Mm -hmm. As we wrap up our conversation today, um, we could all use more hope and inspiration in our lives. So I'd love to hear a success story or achievement by your students that has given you hope over the last school year. Heather, will you start? Oh, goodness. I wish we had more time for this question because it's like I said, we, we just opened and we are watching children embrace language and embrace cultures from around the world. And it's a beautiful story being told every day here, but in particular, since we only offer pre-K, K and one, our first graders are our oldest students and they just recently started reading. So first grade is when we really pump up the foundation of reading and they're reading in English, of course, but we have first graders that are reading in both English and Spanish. So we have a group of three boys that have taken it upon themselves to want to read to our youngest students, to our pre-K friends. So they asked their teacher, we know how to read in Spanish. Can we go read books to pre-K? The teacher did not instigate this. The boys did. There's three of them. And she said, absolutely. Let's ask Directora Zacarias. And I said, of course, and let me come in video. So the boys um, prepared, they prepped, they read their books, they practiced, and then they went and um, sat in front of a pre-K class and read to them in Spanish. And they turned the page and they showed the pictures and you know, there's just something unique about children instigating advocacy for their peers and showing the younger group in the, in the school, you're going to be able to do this. You can be bilingual. You can be biliterate. And these are children that are not native Spanish speakers. These are children who came in with zero experience in Spanish, and they are now wanting to read to their youngest peers. And I just found that to be... Um, just a beautiful moment that I was privileged to get to watch. I just love that you have created an environment where your students feel confident and empowered to be able to ask to do something like that. That mm -hmm. is incredible. Dean, what about you? Will you share a success story with us? I will. I think one that I watched um, unfold this year was from um, one of our um, populations of uh, children who were placed downtown and not by choice and had lived through some traumatic experiences and came to school very school averse and was really not engaged, had not had a background for what schooling was supposed to be about, not a very literacy rich background. And, um, you know, by watching their growth and development, not only academically to show so much progress this school year, but to see them get called down for a kindness award after all of the interventions and tough times they had and building capacity within a family who now continues to love the school and is figuring out how to stay here, I think just warms your heart that children can in the right comforting atmosphere with that whole family of teachers that wraps their arms around someone and moves them forward both academically and emotionally is something that you want to see more often than not. But um, it was a very special moment to see how much growth this young man had made. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was so powerful. 
Thanks so much to both of you for joining us today, for giving us more insight into what charter schools are. And as a mom of three kids, thank you for reminding us of all of the wonderful things that are going on in our public schools and our charter schools in Oklahoma City. It's important that we look for the good and there is a lot of good to be found. I agree. Very thank you much. for having us. Yep. <laughs> it's good to thank see you, Dean. <laughs> good to see you, Heather. Thanks everyone for listening. Join us next time on Raising OKC Kids.